Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for Yahshua. Praise Yahweh for calling Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an echo. But anyway, hallelujah. I was just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. I was just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. I'm a child of Yahweh trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. I'm a child of Yahweh trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. I'm a child of Yahweh trying to tell everybody about Yahshua who can save anybody. I'm a child of Yahweh trying to tell everybody about Yahshua who can save anybody. I'm a child of Yahweh trying to tell everybody about Yahshua who can save anybody. I'm a child of Yahweh trying to tell everybody about Yahshua who can save anybody. About Yahshua who can save anybody. About Yahshua who can save anybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, creator of heaven and earth, through your son, Yahshua HaMashiach. Father Yahweh, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you, Father, for giving us your word, your commandments, your statutes, your ordinances, and your precepts. Father, we thank you for your testimony. Thank you for your ways of righteousness that you have given. Thank you for Torah, for your law. We magnify your name. We thank you for what you do and how you do what you do. We know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we condemn in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Father Yahweh, we thank you for your feast days, allowing us to know what they are, to be able to do them. And Father, we know that there are many things that you must bring to us, but we thank you for your keeping power. We magnify your name. We thank you for what you do and how you do what you do. We thank you, Father, for and lift up our children and our children's children, our sisters, brothers, our nieces, nephews, our uncles, aunts, and our cousins, and all those that were connected to by blood, by marriage, adoption, by association, and spirituality. We praise you, Father, for keeping us, for leading us, for guiding and directing us, showing us how to live upright before you, to show us to repent of sin. And Father, as we acknowledge our sin and the sin of our foreparents, we thank you for what you do. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, thank you for calling us Yahshua, one by one by one. We bless your name. Thank you for what you do and how you do what you do. In Yahshua's name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you for allowing me into your home. I bring you greetings from the congregation of Yahweh, 342 Sylvania Avenue in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15210 in the Bell Suver area. I pray that you will get your Bibles and your pencils and your paper, that you may write down some scriptures, that you may write down some thoughts, that you as a, a person um, seeking for salvation, would be able to do the things that Father Yahweh's word says to us. We thank Father Yahweh for his mercy and his extended grace. We thank him for all of his provision for today, for food, for water, for clothing, and for shelter. And we thank him that our bodies are the temples for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I pray that if you can, call someone that they may watch this message with you. We are in the last of the last days and many things are coming past and we pray that there will be many who will repent, 
turn to Father Yahweh as he calls them, as he draws them, and find this salvation, this pathway that Father Yahweh has given us. This message is called, Order My Steps in Your Word, Yahweh, Father Yahweh. And when we really think about the fact of what Father Yahweh is doing and has done, we want to even begin with this beginning scripture. We've shared this message um, in times past, and yet as we continue to minister Father Yahweh's word, we just thank him for how he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are and have been at PCTV for, uh, we're in our 29th year. Uh, this is one of the third programs that we do, and we just Praise Father Yahweh for allowing us to minister his word to share the things that need to be known. In Psalm 119 and verse 133, this is what it says. It says, order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. We thank Father Yahweh for that word. And, you know, when you look at Psalm 119, it is the longest uh, division of the Psalms, and we just thank Father Yahweh for giving it to us. And as we look even in Psalm 119 and verse 89, this is what it says. It says, forever, O Yahweh, your word is settled in heaven. And so when you realize that Father Yahweh sits high and he looks low, when we realize and recognize that the heavens, even the heavens belong to Father Yahweh, we want to thank him for all the things that we read in the scripture. And as he has ordered our step in his word, uh, we want to look at what the scriptures say and realize how he guided us and how he led us. And there have been many things that we have shared over time. And as we continue to walk, in the sh on the straight uh, uh, road, the narrow road at the straight gate, we want to continue to bless Father Yahweh for what he's doing, for what he's done, and for what he shall do in our lives. As I said, we are in the last of the last days. A lot of times people are not reading their word and they're seeing different things go on in this world. And yet we want to be a people who will look at Father Yahweh's word, who will study it, who will pray, who will ask Father Yahweh, what must I do? And I guarantee you this one thing. He will lead you, guide you, and direct you in the path that he would have you to go. In Genesis chapter 1, Bereshit chapter 1, you know, the scriptures were first written in Hebrew on scrolls. This is just a replica, and yet the scrolls would have been large scrolls that our foreparents wrote on, and even remembering that Father Yahweh gave Moshe the uh, scriptures written on tablets, and yet he also gave him some commands to write on other scrolls which he put in the side of the ark. And yet as we're looking at the scripture, we would, uh, they would have been written in Hebrew, in which they translated into Greek. But because of that, we want to take um, some of the Hebrew thoughts and bring them back into the scripture and realize that as we honor Father Yahweh, he will bless us with the blessings that we have need of. So I just want to read uh, verse 1 and 2 of Genesis, as you may know it, but it, the, that uh, set of scriptures would be called Bereshit. It says, in the beginning, Yahweh created the heaven and, it should be the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Yahweh moved across the face of the waters. And I, you know, I just would like to share that as Father Yahweh has ordered my steps in his word, um, back in 1968, I bought, I purchased a Bible from Pittsburgh National Bank. And when I got that Bible through the mail and opened it, all the way from Genesis to Malachi, it had Father Yahweh's name in it. And so today, when I think about some of the things that Father Yahweh has spoken to my ear and spoken to my spirit, things that I've heard 
uh, uh, from my late pastor, uh, Lewis Johnson. I thank Father Yahweh for the things that he's allowed my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my spirit to receive, and has allowed me to walk in. And so in looking at uh, this first set of scriptures, in the beginning, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. You may see the word Elohim. You may see the word God. But as I've shared so many times, those are titles. And yet we must come to the knowledge that our Heavenly Father has a name. As each one of us have a name, so does our Heavenly Father. And because he does, then we want to allow him to order our steps and have him and allow him to show us how he wants us to walk. And so even as we're acknowledging the fact that we have a heavenly father and, you know, as you read later on in the scripture, you will see things that back that up. If you have a good uh, study Bible, your footnotes, your concordance, your center column reference will show you Yahweh, depending on what Bible you have. Some Bibles are just plain Bibles. They don't have anything to give you any instruction. And yet, if you have a Bible and you are really striving to study the word, you will see Father Yahweh's name in um, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Father Yahweh is sharing his name with our foreparents because so many things have happened. And as our foreparents have been in slavery for 400 years in Egypt, then we have to look at the fact that because they were in slavery, they could not do the pathway that Father Yahweh had originally given. And so therefore, Father Yahweh had to reveal to Moshe the things to tell uh, the people. And so um, I don't want to get off the subject, but one thing that we know in, uh, is that as Father Yahweh uh, has showing us the different things that have happened in the scripture, we just encourage everyone to read from the beginning, read the scripture. Because if you don't read them, then you can't study. If you don't read them, you can't prove them. If you don't read them, you can't search them. And yet, you know, even um, as the Bereans did, and they searched the scriptures daily, we want to be just like the Bereans. You know, there's a lot of things that the scriptures say. And yet, when we look at the scripture and we see the beginning history, we see the creation, we see Adam and Eve, and many things, many um, incidents, you will see some Hebrew words mixed in the English. You know, because Father Yahweh scattered the tongue in Genesis chapter 11 when um, they were trying to make the Tower of Babel go on up. And yet he scattered the tongue so that they could not speak the same language and be unified and be able to do something different than what he said to do. So as Father Yahweh scattered the tongue, then people went in different places. But there was a time when everyone spoke the same language. And in looking at that in Genesis chapter uh, 11, and I hope you read, if you have never read the scripture, I'm praying that you will begin today. It says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And so when we know that the earth was of one language and one speech, and yet we have all these different languages and different tongues today, then we have to recognize many things have happened. And so as we're looking at the scripture and looking at some of the things, we see different chapters in this word that show us the genealogy of people. And many things have happened in all of our lives to cause us not to know in the very beginning who we are or what we're supposed to do or who we're supposed to worship, when we're supposed to worship, where we're supposed to go, how we're supposed to dress. And so a lot of times, if people are not reading the scripture, there are some things that they will not see. But in Father Yahweh ordering our steps in his word, then he shows us what he wants us to know. And some things we have learned, and yet we must put them 
in the place where they go because the scriptures have been translated. Had they transliterated them, and if we were still speaking the same original language, then we would all be speaking the same thing. But as we recognize even in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9, and I'm going to read it because a lot of times if people are not reading what the scriptures say and coming to the knowledge of the truth, then they have no idea as to what the word truly says. And yet we're reading in English, but Father Yahweh is going to return to the land as it says here in Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 9. It says, for then will I turn, return is really, to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. Listen, if you really think about some of the things that are going on, there are so many different religions, there are so many different pathways, there are so many things that people have gone into, and yet a lot of times people don't know why things are the way they are. But as you read the scripture, you will see why things are the way they are. We want to look at the scripture and realize that there's coming a time when Father Yahweh is going to return to the people a pure language. Hebrew is a pure language. And yet as we're looking at the scripture, we are going to realize that many things have happened to cause us to be at the state of where we are. We speak English, but our language is Hebrew. And as a Hebrew woman, Holy Spirit filled, I thank Father Yahweh for his calling and I thank him for choosing me to be able to speak his word. And as he shared with me back in 1987, he said, speak my word, my people will hear. And so because of that, um, I've been here uh, at PCTV since uh, August of 1991. And because of that, I'm thanking Father Yahweh for his word and praying that there will be many people who will read the scripture. And so many things have happened even you know, I want to go back even to the beginning when Father Yahweh gave Adam a command and he said to him, do not eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And because of that, uh, he did eat because Eve had been deceived by the serpent. She ate from that fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and sin came into the world. Adam ate at that same time, and so we, that's one of the reasons why we see so many things happening in the world. To be able to share the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, listen, it takes time to read the scripture. It takes time to share the scripture. There are many thoughts, many doctrines, many principles that are in Father Yahweh's word, and as he's calling us, he wants us to search his word, but we must read it first. And if we don't read it, then you'll hear somebody saying something. You won't know whether it's true or not. And even because they have translated the scripture, if it was written in Hebrew, listen, if it was written in the ancient Hebrew the way it was long, long time ago, probably none of us would be able to read it. And yet, it's, 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 the scriptures were given to us. And because Father Yahweh has given them to us, then we want to be able to see what it does say. And one thing that I can say is that Father Yahweh is not going to allow us to be ignorant of the way he wants us to live. He will speak in our ear. He'll speak a word. And, you know, at that point, we've got to get our Bible out, see if we can find that word. We must get a Bible dictionary sometime and even a regular dictionary and see what the word does say. And yet as Father Yahweh orders our steps in his word, you know, back in the day, I, you know, my, my grandmother and my uncle, my great uncle, took me to worship. And so we went on the first day which is man called Sunday. We went to the Church of God down on Carson Street. And when I think back to the fact that uh, we went through the word, you know, and as a little girl, little, 
you know, I'm thanking Father Yahweh today that I even know that there was a Bible and how he led me in many things. And yet to be able to see today some of the things that we were taught back then and to realize that as Father Yahweh is ordering our steps, he's allowing us to see some things that his word does say. A lot of times, many people are not going into these first five books. And because they're not going into these first five books, um, Bereshith, Shemoth, Waikra, Bedamar, and Debarim, or Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And so if they're not going and reading these scriptures, then they're not seeing the commandments that Father Yahweh has given us. They're not seeing the pathway that Father Yahweh has given. They are not seeing, listen, Father Yahweh's feast days. They're not seeing and understanding who Father Yahweh is. They're not understanding who they are and what they're supposed to do. And yet, we've got to read. We must read it first and then begin to study and listen. Most of us were taught to read Matthew, Mark. They gave us those little teeny Bibles, Gideon sometime. Sometime it was from somebody else. And it started with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Sometimes you had pro well, Proverbs and, and, and the Psalms are in there. But if you don't start at the beginning, you can't see what happened and what, why we need to do what we need to do. Father Yahweh is ordering our steps in his word. And as I shared, I bought that Bible in 1968 from Pittsburgh National Bank. Yahweh's name was in that Bible from Malachi, I mean from Genesis to Malachi. And because of that, it caused me to realize that why aren't the other Bibles fully saying the same thing? And so as I became older and more mature in reading the scripture, Father would speak different things to me and different things have happened in my life, which caused me to really want to read this word, to see what did it say. And so as I read it, as I've shared on many other programs, I cried many a day because I saw some things in the word that no one had really shared with me. And I, all I could say is, no wonder there's so many things going on wrong in the world. Because if we don't know what the word says, if we don't know the commandments that we need to keep, if we don't know how to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, and we got to learn how to love ourselves enough to want to be saved and delivered. But we don't want to walk in unrighteousness and, and end up in the lake of fire. We're all going to die because we all have sinned. And yet when we look at the fact that Father Yahweh is showing us in his word how he wants us to walk, what he wants us to do, what he wants us to say, listen, He's, when, when he brings back that pure language, then we are all going to speak the same thing. The scripture in 1 Corinthians tells us, speak the same thing. But if we are on different pages, different places, coming in at different times, we can't speak the same thing until we sit down together and study that word, pray, and fast, then he will allow us to see what it does say. And one thing that happens is that many times the reason why we don't understand is because things were spiritually discerned. Without the Holy Spirit indwelling us, there were things we couldn't understand. But then once we received the Holy Spirit, we read through the scriptures, we studied. We studied a subject. We studied about Passover. We studied about the Sabbath day. We studied about all of Yahweh's feast days. And yet we began to look at the word to see what does it say as far as how we are supposed to honor Father Yahweh. How are we supposed to turn from sin? You know, repentance is a word that we see in the scripture, or just the word repent. But if people don't know that that word is in here, if they don't know that they have done something wrong, and that repentance is what they need to do to be 
in good standing with Father Yahweh, then they don't know what to do. And so I'm thanking Father Yahweh for some of the things that he has shown in the scripture. And as we continue to look at Father Yahweh's word, he just gives us little by little by little. There are a lot of things, a lot of people are talked about. And yet, when you really go even into Genesis chapter 10, every, every group of people are in chapter 10. And they're in chapter 10 because chapter 10 comes after the flood that was on the earth. And many people have been destroyed. And if people don't know that, listen, they they'll, won't understand why now we see the generations of the sons of Noah. And then if we don't know how to rightly divide the word, listen, we've all been called something that we shouldn't have been called. We've all been guided to do something that we weren't supposed to do. And yet as Father Yahweh continues to show us his word and we search it out and we walk in what he's showing us, he shows us more and more and more and then we gain the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we need. But without reading it, without studying, and sometimes we got to hear from somebody else. Father Yahweh called Moshe to share with our foreparents what the scriptures say. And because of that, we can recognize that as he is showing us his word, then we can be at the place Father Yahweh wants us to be. And as I said, Genesis chapter 10 shows us every group of people. And yet, over the course of time, some of the names have changed. Listen, as I said, many of us were called by something different. They called us Gentiles. They called us Gentiles. They called us many other negative words. But coming out of the line of Shem, we have to understand who we are and what we're supposed to do. And if we understand that, and realize that Father Yahweh called Abraham to be the father of many nations, then we will see who we are, what we're supposed to do. Listen, I know some people probably say she's just rambling on, but Father Yahweh has to order our steps in his word. For those of you who've read about Moshe in the scripture, and you may just call him Moses. But if you read about him in the scripture, then you'll know that he brought the children of Yasharal, you may say Yasharal, people named after Yahweh, out of the land of Egypt. And because he brought them out, Father Yahweh showed him and spoke to him face to face to tell him what he wanted him to tell the children of Yasharal, the 12 tribes. And even he allowed his brother Aaron to be the spokesperson so that uh, some of the things that, because Moshe said, oh, I am a man of slow tongue because he was raised in an Egyptian household. He did not speak like the Hebrews. But one thing we can say, when Father Yahweh wants us to do something, he will equip us to be able to do that. And so that is exactly what happened with Moshe. Now, I'm going to read this in um, Exodus chapter 1. It said, now, these are the names of the children of Yasharal, which came out into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Yaakov, Reuben and Simeon, Levi and Yada, Issachar, Zebulun and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, and all the lives that came out of the loins of Yaakov were 70 people, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And if you continue to read, you see that Joseph had two sons, and he had married uh, his wife down in the land of Egypt. Now listen, a lot of times when we're reading the scripture, there are so many things that have happened in here. And as Father Yahweh sent Moshe once he was born, once he grew up, he was living in an Egyptian household. He was being raised by an Egyptian woman. And when he came to the understanding of who he really was, 
that he was a Hebrew, he decided he wanted to be with his family, with his own people. And yet, as Father Yahweh called him at that burning bush, listen, I'm praying that you will read the scripture. One day, all these things that I'm saying, they'll make so much sense. And you'll say, that's what she was talking about. And yet, as we're looking at the scripture and beginning to see who we are and what we're supposed to do, Father Yahweh will bring us to the place that we need to be. As we look in the scripture, Father Yahweh has given us his Ten Commandments. When he called our foreparents out of the land of Egypt, when, that third month when they arrived on Mount Sinai, he gave them, he gave to Moshe Ten Commandments which a lot of times people say, we don't have any commandments to keep, but we do have commandments to keep. And if we're not keeping Father Yahweh's commandments, either we don't know who Father Yahweh is, either we're not serving him, we're not being drawn, we're not being called. Oops, we have to know who Father Yahweh is. We have to want to serve him. And even if you're just reading your Bible just the way it is, you'll see what it does say. And then one thing that I know is that Father Yahweh will draw your spirit. He will either bring conviction, he will quicken your spirit, he will allow you to be at the place you need to be. But you need to read this word. Many people have read all kinds of novels, all kinds of novels. But I guarantee you this one thing. For the most part, they did not start in the, at the end. They didn't start in the middle. They started right at the beginning to see what those, what that novel was saying. Because if you start in the middle, then you don't know what the front part said. If you start at the end, you have no clue as to why the ending was the way it was. And so we've got to start at the beginning, and even as I shared, in the beginning, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. Now, in the word of Yahweh, In the word of Yahweh, I need a larger print sometime. So I use my other Bibles. And yet this one isn't bad. I can read from this too. And yet when we're looking at the scripture, we want to recognize that as Father Yahweh has given us his word on scrolls, then translated from Hebrew into Greek and into English and many other languages, and yet we want to know how to serve Father Yahweh. He orders our steps. He orders our steps. You know, when I was in the Baptist church as a young woman, a woman came to me and she says, I want you to teach the children. And I said, I don't know anything ab about the word. And it's not that I didn't know anything about the word, but I had never really taught anyone. And she said, all you have to do is read. And I said, well, I do know how to read. And so I began to teach the youngest group, and they enjoyed hearing the word. And we would teach the different little Bible st stories. And one day, it came to me, it's like, let me read every scripture that they have put in this word for this specific lesson. And I began to read and study and look at different places in the scripture. And a lot of times, because people, oops, you know what they're using nowadays? There are so many people are using their cell phones or, or their iPads or iPhones or whatever they have. And so if you say turn to Psalms, they don't even know how to turn to Psalms. They don't know if they go forward, back, or are they right there? And so it's time for people to know how to function in Father Yahweh's word. Do I know everything? No, I don't. Do I know the one who knows everything? Yes, I do. And yet, as we continue, we want to look at Father Yahweh's word. We want to see what it does say. And for all the different lessons that, that have been taught in these 29 years, we, listen, can you remember everything you've taught? No but we can remember many of the things that have been taught because we had to start at the very beginning. 
and we started talking about in the beginning Yahweh that was the first lesson that we taught here at PCTV because people need to know who it is that we are supposed to worship listen they may have 20 different ways to say his name right now but guess what all I can say to you is that when he returns to the land to the people that pure language we're all going to worship him in one consent not 16 different ways and even as it says in Exodus 12 verse 49 it says there's one law for the homeborn and the stranger and so when we're looking at Father Yahweh's word we have to realize that listen we have to do what he tells us to do and so sometimes when people are not truly reading the word then they don't even see what it does say. And yet, as it says in Exodus chapter 12, verse 49, it says, and I, you know what? I'm going to start at verse 48. It says, and when a stranger shall sojourn with you and will keep the Passover to Yahweh, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And let him come near and keep it and he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourns among you. You know, sometimes when we're doing these programs, many things happen. But one thing that I know and two things for sure Father Yahweh, as I shared a little while ago, he sits high, he looks low, he sees all the things that mankind does. He knows who his children are. He knows who his children are. And because he knows who his children are, he's going to draw them. He's going to call them. He's going to choose them. And then we must answer the call. And so as we answer the call, Father Yahweh does some things for us that no man no man can do because he's going to allow us to receive his truth because he's not going to have us ignorant. He's not going to have us going one way when he wants us to go another, you know. And so when we're looking at the scripture, seeing that there's the homeborn and then there are strangers. And so when we're looking at the scripture, we want to be at the place Father Yahweh wants us to be. Now, as I was sharing a little bit ago, Father Yahweh, when he gave to, I hear an echo, when he uh, gave to Moshe, he gave them the, gave him the Ten Commandments. And I want to say that there are many of these commandments which are not being kept today. Why? Because there's so much darkness in the world. The scriptures have been taken out of school. Sometimes all of these other scriptures are not being read in the places of worship. And so therefore, many people don't even know that these scriptures are here. And yet as it begins, to, listen, and Yahweh spoke all these words saying, I am Yahweh which brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You know, so our foreparents were in slavery for 400 years now in Egypt, you know. And because of that, Father Yahweh told them what he wanted them to do, what he wanted them to know. And he told them, he said, and do not serve any, don't have any idols, don't have any graven images. And yet, look, every time they want to honor someone today, what do they do? They make an image of someone. And we wonder why are things happening the way they're happening. Listen, there are many ways to honor someone without making a graven image. He said, you shall not make unto you any graven image or any uh, likeness of anything that's in heaven above or that's in the earth beneath or that's in the water under the earth. He said, don't bow down to them. Don't serve them. For I, Yahweh, am zealous. He's not jealous. He's zealous, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate him. He says, and showing mercy 
mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. How many people truly love Father Yahweh? Whoops, listen. And then many people have taken away Yahweh's name. Sometimes they have heard it, but they don't honor him enough to you call him by his name. You know, they called us all kinds of things, as I said before. And the scripture said that that would happen. But when you really see what the scriptures say, and you're walking up right with Father Yahweh, he will begin to allow you to see who you are, what you're supposed to do, and how to walk up right before him. He orders our steps in his word. He shows us his feast days. Passover and the Sabbath are just two of the feast days. The Sabbath is a weekly day to worship Father Yahweh. Passover comes once a year or the new covenant in Yahshua's blood. And sometimes when people have not yet fully come to the understanding of what some of these things are for and why, then they don't do them. But if we are Father Yahweh's children, then we're going to want to do them. Now, it says, do not take Yahweh's name away. Now, to take his name away from it being known, which is what happened. If your Bible says Lord and God and Jehovah, that's not what Father Yahweh gave. We say, Hallelujah, Yahweh, Yahshua, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nehemiah, Hannah, Hallelujah. Listen, when you really think about what the translators have done to the scripture, there was no J in Hebrew, Greek, Russian, or Latin. The J is only like 515 or 16 years old right now, used universally. But there was no J. There was no J in the scripture. So Judah's name is really Yada, or if you want to say Yahuda, Yada. Jerusalem have Yahweh's name on it. The city called after Yahweh, Yada. Yadia, listen, the people of Yahweh, Yasharal, called by his name, called from the dark and delivered from shame. Listen, there's so many things that have happened in this world. Father Yahweh is waking up his people. He's waking up those dry bones. Listen, I shared, listen, I shared that probably 15 years ago about the dry bones. And yet, again, I shared it not too long ago. And sometimes you have to hear a message over and over and review it and see what it's talking about. I've read almost this whole Bible at this PCTV or at the congregation. And yet, if people are not listening, listening to the word, if they're not reading their words, listen, they're just saying, ah. But remember this. If you turn your ear away from hearing Yahweh's word, and especially his laws and commandments, if your prayers, listen, your prayers won't go past the ceiling. We want our prayers to be answered. We want Father, when we cry and call on him, we want him to answer our call. We want him to answer our call. And yet as we continue in this scripture, Father Yahweh says, he gives us, he says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahweh, a, a day of rest, a day when we're supposed to go and worship Father Yahweh. Man calls it Saturday. Oops. Yahweh called it Shabbat. Shabbat or Sabbath. But if we're not keeping Father Yahweh's Shabbat, whoops, we have to say, are we serving him? It's almost time for me to go. I'm going to read over the graphics. And my ultimate prayer is that you, by the spirit of Yahweh, and we pray that you will seek for the spirit of Yahweh, which he gives to those that obey him, which means each one of us need to find out how 
to obey Father Yahweh. And once we find out how to obey him, then we will be at the place that we need to be. Because we are at a time when we need to see what the word does say. But it says in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 9. I'm going to start at verse 8. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahweh. In it you shall not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, your cattle, nor your stranger that's within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the Shabbat day and he hallowed it. Now when we think about that, we want to honor Father Yahweh. We want to honor him by keeping his seventh day Shabbat. It says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged upon the land which Yahweh gives you. Listen, children are, if the children are not being trained up in the way they're supposed to go, as it tells us in Psalms for us to do, train up a child in the way they're supposed to go. When they are old, they will not depart. We were not, many, many have been taught to keep the Sabbath, but then one thing I would like for you to know is that along with Father Yahweh's Sabbath day are his feast days. And if people are not keeping the rest of the feast days, then that means you're not reading Yahweh's word. Yahshua said he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. So the law and the prophets go all the way. I'm going to show you how far it goes. The law and the prophets. Malachi was the last prophet. So the law and the prophets. If you can see this much of the Bible, that's how much we should be, have read along with reading the fulfillments of this word and here and many things are being fulfilled even today but a lot of times when people are not being their steps are not being ordered in father Yahweh's word then they don't know what they're supposed to do if you look for the word commandment if you look for the word ordinance if you look for the word statute if you look for the word judgment which I like to say regulations which is a set of rules and regulations Father Yahweh gave us to see, to show us how to live and what he wants us to do. And yet, if we're not doing that, then, oops, that means we haven't read. We've got to read the scriptures. We've got to pray. Sometimes we have to fast and say, Father, shop, Yahweh, please show me what I need to do. And if we keep his commandments the way he said to, we will be a very blessed people. Going on down, Exodus chapter 12. And, you know, there are a lot of things that I had intended to say. And yet, guess what? If we pass Exodus 20 and we don't see what it says and we're not doing what it says to do, then it's like that means everything else that is done is not really being done with understanding. It says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in, upon the land which Yahweh gives you. You shall not murder, murder. Kill and murder are sort of like two different things. Kill and murder are like two different things. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant. Listen, our foreparents had animals. They had oxes and they had asses. They had donkeys. They rode on camels. They had a lot of things. But guess what? That same kind of lifestyle is getting ready to come back to us in the near future. Because our land is over in Jerusalem, a land that's getting ready to be hydrated, and seeded, listen, just like the Garden of Eden. 
And so we want to be at the place Father Yahweh wants us to be. We want to see what his word does say. And for those who have a hard time reading, ask somebody to read to you. You may not always see the highest level of what you should understand. But in time to come, because Father Yahweh is unfolding and revealing many things. And because he must reveal many things, we've got to look in the scripture, see what it does say, and see what's going to happen. This, all this word, along with the book of Jasher, the book of e some, many things in the book of Enoch, the Apocrypha, all those scriptures go together to the point where if you're looking for doctrine, which means a teaching on a subject, you will be able to find scriptures that confirm what the scripture says. And when Father Yahweh is ordering your steps in his word, he'll, he'll speak a word to you. And if you hear that word and you see where to go to find it, then you'll be able to be at the place he wants you to be. As I shared, a lot of times people don't know how to find Revelation. Revelation is the last book. Where is uh, Psalms? Almost in the middle. Where is Deuteronomy? Toward the front. But many people don't know those things, and so they can't go back and forth in the Scripture. And if they're not reading, if they haven't, uh, if they haven't read, you can't prove something. If Father Yahweh says, prove all things, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, if he says, prove all things, that means whatever we're saying, there is a way to prove it. We may have to do some digging and some searching, but if he's telling us to prove all things, that means we can prove it. And it may not say it exactly, because remember, they transliterated, I mean, translated these scriptures from Hebrew to Greek and then to English. And so here we are. We're waiting for Father Yahweh to return to us his pure language, his pure language, and we will speak it. And sometimes, depending on what gifts Father Yahweh gives, some people are speaking languages that they've never spoken before because of the gift of tongues. And yet we want to look at the scripture, read it, see what it says, and then obey Yahweh's word. Because Father Yahweh loves us, and as he's calling you, say, yes, Yahweh. Even as when Samuel went to uh, Eli, he, Eli told him, say, here am I, Yahweh. And so when he calls you, say, here am I, Father Yahweh. And you'll know whether it's Yahweh, don't answer the wrong voice. It's time for me to go. Many blessings to you all, and continue to listen as I read over the graphics. You're welcome to come to the Congregation of Yahweh, 342 Sylvania Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15210. You may call 412-441-3894 or 412 2980139. You're welcome to come. May Yahweh bless you with what you need to hear in these last days. Hallelujah. 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 In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, this is what we read. It says, A man heart devises his way, but Yahweh directs his steps. A man's heart devises his way, but Yahweh directs his heart. And so we want Father Yahweh to lead us, to guide us, to direct us in a manner that he wants us to go and to see what his word does say in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24. It says, Man's goings are of Yahweh, but how can a man then understand his own way? We want to be guided by Father Yahweh, by his spirit, and if we're 
being guided by his spirit, then we will see the things that Father Yahweh has given us. In uh, Psalm chapter 17 and verse 5, I pray that you'll write these scriptures down. Psalm chapter 17 and verse 5, it says, Hold up my goings in your paths that my footsteps slip not. We don't want our footsteps to slip because we want to be able to walk on that straight and narrow path as Father Yahweh has given. In Exodus chapter 31, verse 12 through 17, Father Yahweh gave us his Sabbaths, his feast days, to, um, as a sign between he and us so that if we would keep them, then it would be a blessing upon us, and yet we want to walk in the path that Father Yahweh has given us so that we can be where Father Yahweh wants us to be. Got to change that date. Um, Psalm 19 and verse 13. Psalm 19 and verse 13. This is what it says. Keep back my servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. And it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Yahweh, my strength and my redeemer. Father Yahweh is the one who gives us strength. He is the one who redeems us because it is his plan of salvation that shall allow us to be at the place that we need to be. Revelation 12, I mean 14, 12 says, And here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yahshua, the Messiah. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. When we're looking at Father Yahweh's word, we want to be able to, to do the things that he's calling us to do. I thank you for allowing me in your home today. Hallelujah. Yahweh bless you and keep you in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah.